All right, a handful of you recently tagged me in this photo carousel about North Korea that has over 400,000 likes. Some of you were like, is this true? And others of you were like, you need to see the hard truth. But let's look into some of these claims. This one says in 2017, Mother's Day was banned in North Korea because it was distracting citizens from loving Kim Jong-un. All right, that seems wild. Where is American media getting this? Now, it's from the South Korean-based website Daily NK News, and they heard it from a North Korean resident. But I went and read the article, and it says Kim Jong-un and the North Korean government were the ones who enacted Mother's Day, made it a thing in the first place in 2012. And it says the regime was pushing holiday propaganda, but then when people started giving too many gifts, Kim Jong-un got jealous. Okay, this is bizarre, and oh, would you look at that. The Daily NK is funded by the NE the National Endowment for Democracy, which is essentially a private version of the CIA created by Ronald Reagan. Source number one, almost definitely Western propaganda. Thank you to this Rutgers professor for teaching me how to break this stuff down. All right, what's the next one? Oh, come on. It's the haircut one. There are only 28 government approved haircuts in North Korea. WTF fun fact. This one's literally been debunked by a viral YouTube video. I shouldn't have to say this anymore. These two guys hear that you're only allowed to get certain haircuts in North Korea. So they travel to North Korea and they ask for a haircut. And this is what they ask for. Hipster hairstyle with stylish beard. And then the North Korean barber cuts one of their hair. And it looks nice, even though she's probably not used to that. Also, 28 hairstyles is a lot. You think freaking Great Clips in the U.S. offers 28 different haircuts? And these are just the classic propaganda shots. People riding a bike under a tank. Little girl sitting peacefully next to the military. But how does a little girl sitting calmly and peacefully next to an armed body of the state show that this country's a dictatorship? Maybe she's supposed to be crying. I don't know. But people are terrified of cops in the U.S. and intimidated by the military. And then the tank one. Like, do you think these people are running away from the army on their bike? This was probably just a coincidence. And, like, countries should be allowed to have tanks for protection within their own borders. As long as you don't have those tanks roll through another country's capital as part of a brutal invasion that kills millions. Like, if North Korea is bad because they have tanks, then the U.S. is by far the worst because they have way more tanks. All right, finishing up here. Every two and a half minutes, a North Korean dies of starvation. No, there hasn't been starvation since maybe the collapse of the Soviet Union, and when there was, it was due to the brutal U.S. sanctions that have been kept on them for 70-plus years. Now they have a system of economic planning and rationing that's able to feed everyone. And last one, these migrants escaping. Yeah, this looks like a bad situation. But you could take a picture like that from any country on Earth and use it to say they're authoritarian and evil. This is from like a few years ago in the U.S. All right, follow for more. I'm going to have to do a part two. All right, so here's part two of looking at this viral photo carousel of claims about North Korea. This is the last one I want to talk about from Beyond Facts. It is a crime calling North Korea in North Korea. You have to call it just Korea or you may get executed. I think you were supposed to have the word it there. How does this have 400,000 likes? And they don't get executed for calling it that. They just don't because it's not the name of the country. It's called the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, the DPRK. And nobody could even imagine a non-unified Korea before the Korean War and the U.S. manufactured voting plan at the U.N. that divided the country in half, essentially allowing the U.S. to occupy South Korea, installing a fascist dictatorship. I'm disappointed that that's got so many views because I thought our media literacy as a population was getting better. And this is pretty bottom of the barrel propaganda, no offense. Don't mean to infringe on any community guidelines. Um, but watch this. It's a Rutgers professor talking about various myths that have been told about North Korea in the Western media. And she teaches you how to deconstruct these sources and fact check them. It's like a really short and effective media literacy class. Also watch our podcast with Professor Derek Ford. He spent a bunch of time in Korea, both the North and the South. I'd say this is shameless self-promotion, but it's not really, because this is like the best podcast we've ever done, because it's mostly just Professor Ford talking. But he talks about where propaganda stems from, the South Korean tabloids, the defector industry. Okay, and speaking of propaganda, why is it that every time I search Midwestern Marks on YouTube, these guys come up? The Stopping Socialism TV. These guys must pay for a lot of ad space, holy cow. Props to them, I guess. I hear in North Korea, it's reversed. If you search for these guys, Midwestern Marks videos pop up.